Hey there, good morning. Welcome to the Jeep Solid Garage. So today we're going to be removing the transmission on this 1992 Jeep Wrangler YJ. And the reason we're doing that is I've got to replace the clutch on it. This video is sponsored by South Bend Clutch. They give me a clutch that I'm going to be installing on this. If you guys remember, I did an engine rebuild on this and the clutch was just destroyed. I went ahead and put everything back together because I wanted to show you guys how to replace the clutch proper or how like the normal guy does it. You don't normally do it with, by removing the engine. You normally do it by removing the transmission. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. This is going to be a little bit of a challenge because a lot of the skid plate bolts are rusted. It's going to give me a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to work on this today. We're going to see how far we can get if we can get that transmission out of here. Start off by disconnecting your negative battery terminal. And I've got the wheels chopped over there. Don't want it rolling around on me. Now next we're going to unbolt the transmission mount. We've got those two bolts right there we're going to take off. And that guy right there. Hi Tootsie. You came to help? You're going to get greasy under there. And we're just spinning there. Got to get a wrench on the top. There we go. Now it's super important to remember that uh, you can't just drop your skid plate. On these uh, mid-90s YJs, your cross member and skid plate are all as one. And your skid plate mounting bolts, they actually support the uh, transmission and transfer case. So do not drop your skid plate here without supporting the transmission. So we're going to do that next. All right, now that the transmission and transfer case are supported by a jack stand, we can go ahead and start battling these uh, skid plate bolts, see if we can get those guys out. I always like to support the skid plate with a clamp on one side, then I'll get the other side undone just so it doesn't hang down and tweak the other side. I like to... And as much as I can, I like to put bolts back where they go. This way I don't mix anything up, I don't lose anything. Just helps me keep track. Let's remove the uh, transmission mount. The exhaust hanger here is busted, as you can see. Lots of work to do on this. This needs a complete new exhaust. Fun stuff. Well, we're off to a good start, so next we are going to move on to the drive shafts. We're going to pop the uh, rear drive shaft, front drive shaft off. When you take the uh, drive shafts off, the uh, U-joints, be sure you'll see me, be sure to put some tape over the caps. You don't want those caps falling off and needle bearings going all over the place. So let's take care of that real quick. And here I've picked a nice uh, LA Looks silky white fingernail polish. Uh, I always end up stealing some of my daughter's fingernail polish. So I can mark the uh, drive shaft and yoke. So I get everything back in the same position to maintain the balance.
And when you pop your drive shaft, this is just gonna pull right out of the transfer case. When you pull that out, be prepared for a little bit of fluid to come out. I have a catch band down here because you're gonna lose a little bit of fluid. My transfer case is low on fluid right now, so I'm not worried about spilling any out. But uh, yeah, famous last words. Uh, I'm gonna pull it out and it's gonna spill all over. We'll see. Anyways, some masking tape ready because we don't want these caps off this U-joint to fall off. Put some cardboard here just because I don't trust it. Yep, pretty dry. And same thing on the front drive shaft. Uh, I'm gonna unbolt it, but with it, I'm just gonna actually hang it out of the way. I'm not gonna pull it out of the uh, differential on the front there. But I do wanna mark it as well, get everything back in the same spot. Dang it, and that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. Here's my bearing cap. Or my, my bearing cap, there's my, uh, what is it, U-joint cap. Let's set this down for a sec. Sure enough, one little uh, needle bearing. You can see down in there. One little needle bearing out of place there. Not the end of the world, but uh, definitely a hassle to be avoided. Oh, I'm gonna mess up these other ones. Okay, good to go. They're all back in place. Need to get new U-joints on this guy anyways. That will be an upcoming video. and hang this guy up out of the way. So we're gonna disconnect a lot of the wiring. Uh, we got the, uh, what, speed sensor there, up on top. Got like vent hose up here, some more electrical. The shift linkage, shift linkage right here. This, you just get a screwdriver behind it and pop it off, that, that pops right out of there. And the slave cylinder, we're gonna just disconnect that. Slave cylinder, oh, up there. Yeah, up there we got the uh, crank position sensor. Disconnect that. And then on the passenger side, one more harness to release here. And then the starter bolt right here, and then one up on the top side right up here, which I can feel with my fingers. And I left the starter everything plugged in. I'm just going to set it up on top of the uh, frame rail here. And that should be everything disconnected except for the shift lever, which we will get to next. Alrighty, now I've got my fancy little uh, transmission jack here, and I highly recommend getting a transmission jack like this. Uh, this actually was only like $90 or so, well worth it, because we're gonna be supporting the transmission, transfer case, all that, I'm trying to slide it back, so let's put this in place. So here I've got all the weight on the uh, transmission jack here, so this should be loose now. Let me go up just a little bit higher. And then I can pull this jack stand out. And at this point, do not get underneath it. Now I'm gonna lower it uh, just a couple inches. You can lower it down like three inches, but no more than that. 
And then we can disconnect our uh, shifter. And now back on the, pass the driver's side here. So we can get the camera up there. We've got just a couple more bolts. This bolt here on the shift linkage and there's another one right around the back side here which I can feel with my finger. And now to disconnect the shift lever, I'll show you this when I get it all the way out. There's a little piece in there, we're gonna push it down and then rotate it counterclockwise and the, it'll pop right out of the shift lever. We've kind of pulled the boot up out of the way there. But this will be a lot easier to show you when it's out. Gotta use two hands. So it is possible to get the shift lever there, but I can't get it, it's just stuck. I'm gonna have to get to it from the top, so let me raise this guy back up. And we'll just have to pull the boot here. Mine's already loose, so I was just trying to show you guys a quicker way, but it just turned into a big hassle. Let's pull this boot and we'll get to it from the top. And there we go, popped right out. So this is the piece I was trying to show you. You just push this down. This guy gets pushed down and turned counterclockwise to release it. Now up on the top here, on each side of the transmission, on the back side of the engine, there's a mounting bolt on each side. Having a flexible socket really helps. Now mine, this one here is 9 16 but a lot of guys, uh, a lot of these have like a Torx bit here, like a, I don't know, T T13 or something. So just be sure you figure out what size bolt you have and what type. Don't just assume that it's a standard hex. Way down in there. Okay, so here's our bolts. We've got like these uh, metal screws. You've got one on each side, then one up, or one down at the bottom and one on each side. These are the transmission to engine mounting bolts uh, on each side. Then up top, these are the two uh, driver's side, passenger side that were very difficult to reach, way down in there. And it's just a matter of uh, like lowering the transmission, raising it up so you can, you can find them and get to them. Now we just have those last two bolts, one on each side on the bottom. And I've jacked the uh, engine back up, the transmission back up with the uh, transmission jack. Then I put the uh, jack stand back under the oil pan there to support the weight of the engine. Now I can go ahead and take those two bolts out and then slide the transmission away with the transmission jack. Okay, we should be completely out of our mind. So we should be completely uh, disconnected from everything. Now we've got the input, input shaft going into the transmission. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to wiggle this off, but uh, let's see if I can do that. I might have to call my buddy Jason, have him come over and help me move this, but let's see if I can do it by myself. And with a lot of wiggling, we're slowly getting it. Well, that was a real bear, but uh, I've got some tips for you guys. So that's good enough to get the clutch done, which is what my goal is. The exhaust was kind of in the way a little bit, but fortunately my exhaust is already disconnected because it's uh, broken off, so that wasn't a problem. The uh, jack stand, or the uh, transmission jack, 
Uh, get it back more towards the back side of the transmission. You know, they recommend putting it in the middle of the transmission, but obviously the bell housing has like no weight. But then with the uh, weight of the uh, transfer case on there, just hanging off the back side, it actually works better to have the transmission jack back more towards the back end of the transmission. And I got a 2x4 on the back side here, which is loose right now, but it supports the weight of the transfer case when it tries to tip. Uh, definitely would be easier with two people, but this will definitely give me access to the clutch, because that's my goal anyways. We're gonna be replacing the clutch. So yeah, definitely a bear to get that thing out by yourself, but it can be done. Low profile jack, uh, transmission jack, certainly helpful because you're doing a lot of uh, monkeying around trying to slide it out. Be sure to subscribe to follow along as I continue on. Next step is gonna be replace the clutch. I'm gonna take you through that process. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.